having to think about it more and more. But I don't think it's necessary. It has a direct result on the way we acquire projects. It's more to do with how they get distributed. Because obviously if you're going to do, sell a film in a worldwide deal, then you've sold the world. It's, you've done your job. It's one contract, you know, one sale, one delivery. In many ways, it's, it's just boom, job done. So, uh, you know, in a way, I know that a lot of producers um, think that, you know, if they have the relationships and so on with the, these VOD buyers, that actually it's going to eventually, maybe they won't need sales agents. But what happens if you don't do a worldwide deal? Then you really have to approach selling the film in the traditional way. I agree with you that a, a sales agent will always have a role. And uh, again, Netflix, Amazon are the two worldwide buyers today. There might be more coming in the future. But if your film doesn't sell to Netflix and Amazon on a worldwide basis, uh, well, you still need you to still, exactly. distribute it and yes. sell it and exploit it. Well, I think for, for, for a sales company, you, you sell on an all rights basis. Yeah, we do. Against yes. a minimum guaranteed view, these part of the mix. It's probably not the main driver, it's, no. uh, but it's part of the deal. Uh, so, so that's that. And, and again, the majority of the films that we do come from that cycle. Actually, sales agents will sell to a distributor and then we'll get the film onto, onto the VOD platforms. And then we, when we start moving upstream, so working with sales agents that haven't sold their film in XYZ territory, then it's a, it's, it's a different relationship. They, they take off their sales agent hat and they put the distribution hat on and they say, okay, well, we're going to distribute that film. So there's no MG involved. There's a profit sharing scheme and we do straight distribution deals. And if there is money being put up, it's for marketing in order to support the film and make sure that, uh, well, no. and that's it's more, uh, let's say, a straight distribution deal. And so the, the relationship is a bit different. And sometimes on, on that sort of direct to VOD releases, we start paying some small minimum guarantee in order to secure rights for longer periods of time to get higher commission rates. And we start moving in that film a little bit. But it was not the case five years ago. The revenues were, were still too small. But now we're starting to see transactional VOD pick up a little bit. That enables us to... Yeah, that was kind always of one of our things. We, ne we could never... We never were able to get reli reliable information about revenue. Yeah. So you, it was very hard to judge whether you should go into a deal or not. Mm -hmm. Just because there was no evidence yeah. you know, of money earned, which is what it's always about yeah, in the course. end. To finance films only from VOD, again, Netflix, Amazon are putting insane amounts of money into production, insane. But if we take that aside and we just look at the transactional VOD sector, iTunes, uh, Google, Amazon from a transactional point of view, the revenues of the, the industry so far are not uh, at a point where we could justify financing a whole films from the revenues that we're getting from this kind of exploitation. I think everybody will adjust. And, and I don't think that, it, I'm not a big believer that it will replace everything and the, the, the film industry as we know it will die. And I'm not pretty much uh, well, they'll still in, in catastrophe be, scenarios be the like festival that. of Cannes, won't they, yeah, I yeah, hope. Yeah. And well, I hope so too. And you know, <laughs> I mean, just the fact that it's the festival of Cannes, yeah. that's all about the theatrical experience, mm. isn't it? It's going to see the, the films in selection on that huge screen. In the current state of affairs, if you ask me, is that most movies don't make it to theatres, or in a very imperfect way, in very few territories, or in even limited releases in some territories. And the reality, and it's been like this for many years, that people watch movies in other way, in other means, in yeah, the theater. Yeah, absolutely. DVD, television, mm. it's, it's always been there. And it's, well, no, it's just trying to, to reconcile sort of the game changers that Netflix yeah. and Amazon are in terms of doing this on a worldwide basis according to their own rules. It's bizarre. It's a strange business. <laughs> <laughs>